Hey everyone, this is Shadrach with Read Throughs with Shadrach. Um, that is going to be the name of this new series that I'm going to be working on, where I go through some books, you know, be it books of my childhood, or books, you know, read a chapter out of a book or something, and basically one could say that, um, That's, you know, one second here. This right here was the first book in the series that I did, a book of outer space for you. Um, so that's what the new series is going to be called. That's one of the many books from my childhood. This book right here that I have is, as you can tell, called King Kong. This was like you know, kind of like the the read the book version of the movie, and from what I remember, this book, you know, being a small child, this book looked very scary. You got a big, monstrous, fifty foot tall gorilla on the cover, basically, and just it looked rather scary. I remember my brothers and I, we used to, you know, put this thing over our faces and go, rawr, like we were like monsters and stuff. Um, it was a very interesting time back then when we started reading this book, because the thing is, it was at a time before there was ever any Google, any internet, and the, and the fact of the matter is, is, um... Let's just say that it was a very different time back then. Very different time. And that's just how things were back then. You didn't have Google. You had the library. If you wanted something, you know, you had to use card index. You know what I mean? Who remembers all the old libraries? Anyways, <laughs> those are some old pen pencil markings. Some more pencil markings. But anyways, I'm getting at is that this was a very interesting book to look at because you saw all these different pictures. Now, if you can see, the copyright is 1977, and it was reprinted in 1982. It's supposed to be kind of like, like the book version of a of the movie itself. More like the history of the book of the story. It's it's kind of like the book version of of the entire movie. So that, you know, kids can read through and look at the pictures and not, you know, worry about um, having to sit through maybe 90 to 2 hours of watching the original King Kong and the 1970s or 1980s remake. So basically, it's it's not a behind, it's more than just a novelization, if you will. It's also kind of like a behind-the-scenes book. Can you see the pictures right here? See? It's, you know, it basically has all these photographs and everything. And just looking at the pictures, the black and white photographs, as a child, was very, um, how should I say to you, very scary. But there's also, like, a behind-the-scenes look at it all. Like, how, 
Marion C. Cooper came up with this big monstrous ape. In fact, to give you an illustration of this, let me read this paragraph right here. The movie King Kong opened in New York in 1933. It was a great success. Kong found a whole new world of fans when it presented on television. The old film is still seen almost every year, both on TV and in theaters. Some people believe it'll still be playing in 2001. Well, we've seen 2005 when we had Peter Jackson's rendition of it. The man who was the father of Kong was Marion C. Cooper. He was a documentary filmmaker with a fine sense of adventure who had made movies in Iran and Siam. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with Siam, Siam is now Thailand. He wanted to do a film about living monsters such as African gorillas and the huge dragon lizards of Komodo, of Komodo Island. I about said Komodo Dragon. He presented his idea to RKO Pictures. The studio liked the idea, but decided to use models instead of living animals by means of stop-motion photography. The models could be moved, made to move and seem alive. One frame of film at a time was shot. The model was moved a tiny bit for each frame. When the frames run quickly, the models look alive. Marcel Delgado was the model maker who created Kong. Willis O'Brien was the special effects master who brought the monster to life. King Kong, the great ape who terrified millions, was really a wire model covered in rabbit fur. He was only 18 inches tall. You gotta remember in 1933, you know, for a movie made back then, it was big deal. 1933... A lot of interesting things happened in 1933. Let's see. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president in 1933, beating Herbert Hoover. And as any World War II historian would know, Adolf Hitler also came to power in 1933. So while... So this movie was made, well... Roosevelt, FDR, and Hitler were alive. It's a pretty interesting film. Here's something many may not know. Let's read this. Six months after the success of King Kong, RKO re released a sequel, Son of Kong. Poor Carl Denham. He was going to make a million for Kong. Instead, he was sued by half the people of New York because of the damage the great ape did. Denham fled civilization. He went back to Skull Island, taking with him a girl named Hilda, whom he loved. Denham and Hilda discovered another ape. But the ape was much smaller than Kong, with white fur. The twelve-foot Kiko, son of Kong, was trapped in a pool of quicksand. When Denham and Hilda rescued him, he quickly became their friend. See? The caption underneath the photograph says, The young ape fights a dinosaur while Denim and Hilda hide on a ruined temple. See that? Amazing how they could still make movies like this and films, what have you. Films and what have you in, in the 1930s and are still, you know, impressive feats to this day. That there was no computer graphics back then. But back then, that was top of the line. Denham came to Skull Island hoping to find a treasure that would restore his lost fortunes, fighting off dinosaurs along the way. The white ape led Denham and held it to gold. Later, the treasure hunters were threatened by a crook named Hellstrom, who had killed Hilda's father years before. Hellstrom was finally killed when the volcanoes of Skull Island erupted. Denim, Hilda, and the faithful crew members fled. Once it was seen that Denim would drown, the son of Kong held him above the waves until rescuers arrived. 
Denim was saved, but could not save the white ape, who sank slowly beneath the sea. Poor little Kong, said Denim. Do you think he knew he was saving my life? The question was unanswered. With the gold and Hilda, Carl Denham sailed back to civilization and into the movie. In fact, here's another interesting big famous movie gorilla, Mighty Joe Young, or Mighty Joe. Yeah, that's what it is, Mighty Joe Young. But the thing about Mighty Joe Young is that he was more like the nice guy version of of King Kong because it says this Mighty Joe was a 12 foot gorilla he was taken to New York from Africa to become a nightclub star but civilization proved too much for him he went on a rampage and it was ordered he'd be shot on sight human friends tried to rescue Mighty Joe in the end Joe saves children from a burning orphanage and is forgiven for his crimes. In a happy ending, he goes back to Africa together with his friends. See? Mighty Joe, clutching a child, attempts to fire a rescue. You might not be able to see the child, but that's Mighty Joe right there. There he is with a lady. Then, another attempt at cashing in on the King Kong success was Conga. And according to this, I'm sure you can probably read it yourselves, is that Conga was about a mad scientist who used serums to turn chimpanzees into giant apes. But instead of stop-motion photography, this movie was more of a cheaper plan, with an actor in a gorilla suit. And that was made in back in, the 19, in 1960. Oh, here's an interesting one. King Kong versus Godzilla. Ah, oh, they had actually two versions. In the American version, Godzilla won. Excuse me. Ah, I'm sorry, I, I got mixed up. That's right, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. In, in the American version, it was King Kong who won. But in the Japanese version, it was Godzilla who won. So forgive me for that. I just got a lot on my mind as of late. And it states right here. By the 1960s, a new kind of monster had been born. The Japanese film studio Toho began producing full-color movies starring a prehistoric monster with radioactive breath named Godzilla. Godzilla was popular not only in Japan, but in the United States, too. Among the many sequels to the original movie was King Kong vs. Godzilla. It was produced in 1963. The entertaining movie was aimed at young children, and they loved it. The monsters were funny and lovable, as well as destructible. It's destructive, excuse me. King Kong seemed to have grown at least twice his former size as he fought Godzilla. The clever Japanese made two endings for the movie. In the Japanese version, Godzilla won the big fight. In the American version, King Kong was the winner. Everyone knew that neither monster was really dead. People eagerly awaited for a sequel. The King of Monsters, King Kong versus Godzilla. That's very impressive. A 
That's another King Kong. That's another picture of Kong right there. And this right here talks about King Kong Escapes, 1967. That in that version, in Kong Escapes, 1967, the great ape was forced to dig for radioactive materials, but the spell basically was broken by radioactivity, where Kong run, ends up going to Japan. And apparently you have the furry Kong fighting against the evil robot impersonator. Because, and that's something I forgot to write. The evil scientist bought a robot Kong to capture the real ape. So, basically, very interesting thing right there. And this right here was from Planet, there are pictures from Planet of the Apes. I've not seen all of the Planet of the Apes movies. I've seen the first one with Charlton Heston. But... I've not seen the whole series, and I hear it's very good. There have been other ape monster movies besides those based on King Kong. Edgar Allan Poe's Murders and the Rue Morgue, the story of an ape killer, has been filmed twice. The 1940s movies that were made at a lower cost included failures like Bell Lugosi's Ape Man and Return of the Ape Man. In those films, the great Dracula had to act the role of a part ape, part werewolf-like monster. I can only imagine how that looks like. <clears throat> a far better movie was Planet of the Apes. Now we all know about Planet of the Apes. For those of you who do not know about Planet of the Apes, it's basically a Charlton Heston film where a group of astronauts crash land on a planet that's inhabited by ape men. And I saw a documentary about how they made the movie and everything. And it was basically they had like set up an assembly line of makeup artists to like assemble the makeup of the actors. They would have like one set of makeup artists apply one set of appliances and another makeup artist would apply another set of appliances. It was pretty interesting. It said this. Look at this. Very good makeup men changed actors into believable apes in Planet of the Apes. Which was a great hit in 1968. And this right here basically you know discusses all the movies and everything that they did. Now, I understand this book right here, I didn't necessarily read through it, but this has actually been a very good book from my childhood. This is the 1976 version of King Kong right here. I mean, think about it, look at that, instead of, you know, biplanes, now they have modern planes and helicopters, and... This version you see back here is the Empire State Building, but in the 1976 version, King Kong is on the World Trade Center. Oh, and I forgot to mention something about King of the A um, Planet of the Apes. There's really something I really forgot to mention that just now came to me. There was apparently a short-lived television series based on the films that just didn't do right. It just didn't do too good. But anyways, back on this here page, the original King Kong was still just as popular. And there were two remakes in regard to King Kong. And it states that in the 1930s, they wanted Kong to eat people and commit bloody acts. But those scenes were removed from the censor. 
because back in the thirties, you know, they had you know different mentality about what was allowed on film and what wasn't allowed on film. I heard like one story I hear is that in Gone with the Wind, there was this character that said the that was basically shirtless and said, "Damn." I said, frankly, I don't give a damn. In the 1930s, that was just, like, literally a shocker. That's basically a fun fact. And back then, people were like, oh my god, he said that language, oh god. Yeah, but in movies today, people cuss every other word, so what's the point of even worrying, you know, worrying anymore? But anyways, continuing onward, it states that it states that you know in the 1970s they had ratings and parents could tell check in the movie if the film was suitable for children older children were not especially scared by any scenes of gory killings anymore So basically, Dino De Laurentiis made a modern version in 1976. Very interesting history. It states that the De Laurentiis movie cost $24 million to make. The title role went to a 47-foot mechanical ape. He was made to move by 20 technicians who moved with an electronic board. The stop motion of Kong 1933 had a slightly jerky move. New style machines gave the ape monster a smoother, more lifelike motion. The modern ape machine was the reason for the high cost of the movie. The mechanical monster was used in mostly in close-ups. For long shots, such as Kong destroying in, in his jungle home and Kong destroying New York, De Laurentiis used a man in a gorilla suit. Careful, detailed miniature buildings were built. The six-foot ape seemed to be 40 feet tall when he rampaged among them, stomping them to bits. The plot of the new King Kong is very much like that of the old. Only the people are changed to make them modern. The hero is a scientist instead of a first-rate tramp stringer. Excuse me, instead of the first mate of a tramp steamer. The heroine is a hip, wise-cracking movie star. She treats the lovesick giant with dry humor instead of spending her time screaming which reflects, you know, the changing attitudes towards women. But moving onward. The mighty Kong once again becomes a very sad sideshow freak. Once again, he breaks free and is hunted down. Even the airplane scene is recreated, and this time with helicopters. The ending must always be the same. Beauty destroys the beast... King Kong topples the tower of the World Trade Center. Topples from the tower of the World Trade Center and, and dies. Well, you got to also remember that that was made in 1976, so bear with it. Along with the heroine, we cannot help but shed a little tear. Excuse me, we cannot help but shed a tear. Poor giant ape. The little guys always get him in the end. Pretty interesting book, you know, and I never got a chance to read any of this. I mean, it was basic, like I said, it was a movie, you know, behind the scenes, and it was like a behind the scenes movie, and like movie facts, and also, you know, how should I put it to you, kind of like a, like a, a literary version of the entire story, basically. And it's been very good. It's it's a very good book that I grew up reading and 
like I said, as a child, it scared me a lot as, as a child. But when I started opening the books, I started realizing that it was all a movie. Well, this is, you know, very interesting, you know, read through. Or rather, a page turner, I should say. I didn't necessarily read through it. I hope you enjoyed this session. I really do. You might find it on Amazon or eBay. I don't know if they make this book anymore. It's called Monsters from Crestwood House. Basically kind of like the classic monsters of old. So basically, it's been something of my childhood. I'm going to make a sequel to this video to where I actually read through. And this is going to be a two-part series. This is going to be a two-part video right here. King Kong. And Shadrach. Read throughs with Shadrach. Monster series from Crest House to King Kong. That's probably what I'm going to call this video. I mean, let's just leave it with this big mean face. Hopefully I don't give you nightmares with this. Have a good day. Bye.